Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review and kind of general discussion about pen multimeters. The review is specifically about this Micronta 22-165. This is a much older Radio Shack unit. I think this thing's probably 15 years old and still works great. And actually, just for using little button cell batteries, it has excellent battery life. And pen type multimeters tend to be like that in my experience, where they tend to have good uh, battery life. And they're convenient. They t the more the modern ones that are made nowadays are pretty nice. Depending on how much money you spend, you can get nice true RMS ones. Uh, this was a more basic unit, but back in the day, this was still about fifty bucks just for uh, packaging all the electronics into a space like this. The nice advantage to pen type multimeters is that you don't have the separate multimeter box. You just have it all in one kind of, uh, consolidated unit, and it can make it a lot easier to use in, in several types of situations and diagnostics, that type of thing, as well as continuity tests where you don't have the whole bulky meter sitting off somewhere. The one disadvantage, this is an older one, so the ergonomics aren't that great. Newer ones are much better. They just have a twist style, kind of like a any other tabletop or portable multimeter. This one has most of the standard functions, resistance, AC and DC voltage, a continuity test, a data hold, and of course it has an on-off. And I do like that as it's a mechanical on-off on a software, so it really is disconnecting the battery and probably helps with the battery life. This is auto-ranging and you don't actually have an option to do a manual range. One of the neat features about this one, which I've noticed even on modern ones, not all of them have this feature, which is an interchangeable tip. It has this little insulated uh, collar right here, and it has a hex in it. And then there are little hexes on these tips here. And it came with both a short and a long tip, which is kind of nice, just because it makes things just a little bit easier to use. You just set it in there and then twist the collar, and that actually threads it in, and you just screw it on tight. And there's obviously not going to be many people who own this unit and... <laughs> You're certainly not going to be able to walk into a Radio Shack and buy one of these things anymore. But part of the purpose of my channel is not just reviewing a bunch of new stuff or Harbor Freight stuff, but uh, just creating this database of items that there just wasn't uh, videos on on YouTube or not very many and just kind of adding uh, more information there. For instance, this Micronta pen type multimeter, I believe this will be the first video about this on YouTube. And just pen multimeters in general, that I only found a few dozen videos just of that subject matter. So it's kind of surprising that there is uh, just not that much information. Anyway, we'll just do a quick demonstration. This time we'll just do a quick DC voltage measurement on a couple of batteries here. We have a little AA and then a tiny little uh, lithium ion wrap cell that was part of a micro drone that had bad motors. And we just take the multimeter, and what's kind of nice is we can just take it and look right at the meter just like so. And that battery is actually just about dead. Actually, we did have the polarity wrong, but it's fine. It just said minus. And we're at 1.008 volts, so that actually is a pretty much dead alkaline battery. Imagine that. And that's really just what makes these a convenience. It's just the fact that the display... Let me figure out what the wires are. They're right here. Uh, is just happens to be right next to, or you happen to be holding uh, onto it as you're doing your measurement, so you don't have this meter that's falling off or something. It's always just right there, and we can see that's 3.62 volts. So that's actually measuring pretty good. Of course, the portability of these things is what makes them so nice. So if we go in the continuity and then uh, resistance measurement, we can quickly. And it's just always kind of right there. So if you're testing multiple things for continuity, it's much easier just to grab something like this and toss it in your pocket and then do each measurement. And you have the probes in your hand ready to go rather than like doing a measurement and then moving somewhere else, picking up the portable meter, setting it down somewhere, doing another measurement. It's really nice when they're integrated. So that was just kind of the general purpose of the video as well, showing that even these old Radio Shack Microntas, even though this isn't true RMS and it's just an averaging, it's still a pretty handy piece of equipment. And so I wouldn't be too afraid of uh, even cheaper ones. Pen-type multimeters are an item that even Harbor Freight hasn't sold because they don't sell many of them, and so they're kind of hard to find. And the ones I have seen have all been, you know, uh, at least worth the money that they were charging. This for $50 retail is probably a bit too much back in the day. I would say late 90s or early 2000s. But 
you could always get a coupon and get these on sale or they end up doing closeouts. And that was kind of the deal. Radio Shack's prices were always kind of high, uh, but eventually things would get marked down many times by a huge amount. Anyway, uh, that pretty much concludes just a basic review of this little uh, pen type multimeter and just talking about pen type multimeters. And for nostalgic purposes, just to show one of these uh, kind of nice and unique Radio Shack items. I'm going to open it up real fast just so people who may be interested just can take a quick look and see what's inside and see that even this old one can be calibrated. I also wanted to mention I really appreciate all the new subscribers. I, uh, as well as I uh, really appreciate all my old and original subscribers. I appreciate them all and just wanted to say uh, thank you for supporting the Caddis Maximus channel. This takes a couple of, I believe, AG13. Uh, this says A76, actually, in these cells. Uh, well, they look just the same as the A13. So this is the standard little, uh, whatever you call these, 8 or 9 millimeter button cells. And let's just get this open. We probably should get the little probe out of this thing. Nice and easy. Changing out the probes is always real nice and easy. And we just have one screw in the middle here. It's a really long screw for the battery cover, so it kind of holds it... Well, that's just going to have to be like it is. Let's see if we can't get this thing to cooperate here. Always kind of interesting pulling these type of contraptions apart because they always kind of connect the little... Like up here, there's something that's really holding it. Here we are, got it open. I actually, this thing was just held on by like a little ring and a you know plastic kind of detent and that's actually what was holding this all together so we can see right under the switch they actually did a nice job where they had uh, a bit of plastic in there to help uh, prevent crud from getting all over the circuit board we actually have a little bit of shielding inside this here and then of course we have a spring terminal right here which is what makes contact with that shielding and uh, I don't know a ton about electronics but I do know that we have like a little crystal in there to because it does have a tiny little processor because it is a digital multimeter although this would be a calculator level processor would be the only way to <laughs> describe what's inside this and then we have our little piezo speaker and then we actually have a little surface mount potentiometer there and there's another one hiding down a little bit lower and that's how you can actually calibrate this unit we can also see the shielding on this side and a little spring that contacts it. And I always thought that was amusing. This is something that's pretty retro, only in old electronics, where it's one of those little chips that they usually would just put right onto whatever circuit board and put a drop of glue on. But in this case, they did the little glue drop chip on its own little PCB, and then it's soldered to this. So I think that's kind of amusing. This is only the kind of thing that you would see in a pretty old piece of equipment. That's definitely for sure. Anyway, I just wanted to show people inside one of these and how they're just not particularly complicated devices. And that's why real basic like Sentec multimeters, you know, Harbor Freight has a super basic one that they just give away for free. And I think it's interesting of all the meters Harbor Freight's had, they've never had a pen type. And I think that would be pretty cool if they actually came out with one. Anyway, I once again really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time. Caddis Maximus out.